Hi, Mateusz here and welcome to my new video. Today I will show you five different ways how to paint face of your miniatures. Many new painters are struggling how to paint skin and face in general. But this is why I made this video. Today you will learn how to paint face of your miniatures easily and quickly. I will present you different ways using different paints and different techniques to achieve your goal. But now I don't want to waste your time with my talking. Let's move to painting. This video will be divided into five sections, each presenting the different method of painting. I will start with the method one, which I called quick and dirty. White base coat is the way to go in this case, because I will use contrast paint directly from the pot. I don't have a huge experience with contrast paints, this is why I decided to use them in this test. I applied it all over the face, focusing on the deepest areas. When it dried, I wasn't 100% happy with the outcome, as it reminded me a scene from Star Wars Revenge of the Sith. Nevertheless, I went on with painting the eyes, starting with the black paint and after that a smaller dot of white paint to make the A-balls. To finish the eyes, you just need to make a little black dot in the middle and that's it. Using the flat flesh from Vallejo, I just roughly highlight the nose, cheeks and forehead because they look rather dirty. Ideally, this step shouldn't be required. For the battle ready standard it might be ok, but honestly, I prefer more clean paint jobs. This is why I present you a second method which I called quick and clean. We start again with the white base coat, in this case again a Vallejo white paint. Then I apply a flat flesh from Vallejo with the brush. Two layers are enough to get the uniformly smooth color. I use the Juliman Flesh Contrast Paint from GW again, but this time I will dilute it with the airbrush thinner. It will have the consistency more like a wash than a contrast paint. I focus only on the recesses, letting the paint flow to the deepest shadows. When it dries, I apply a second layer, strengthening the shadows and trying to make the transition between the base color and the shadow more smooth. I paint the eyes exactly as before. Well, I always paint the eyes like this. 
To make the face even more interesting, it is worth to paint the hair, the beard and other details. In this case I applied a Vallejo dark grey color on the bird and I highlighted it with the mix of dark grey and a little bit of white paint. Some last touches with the contrast paint diluted with the airbrush thinner around the details we just painted. And the result looks like this. It looks clean. Definitely more cleaner than just the contrast paint version. If you are in a hurry, this is a way to go. The third method is the brush highlighting method. This time I start with the black undercoat. Firstly, I wanted to mix the dark red and salmon rolls from Vallejo to paint the base layer but it was too pink for my taste. So I took the red leather, which is the brown paint but with the reddish tone, and I mix it with the salmon rolls. I liked it more, so applied it as a base coat. Keep in mind that painting over the black undercoat will make your base coat less saturated. Then I use the diluted contrast paint with the thinner from method number 2 and I use it like a wash, applying it all over the head, again focusing on the recesses. When it dried, I added a bit of salmon rose to the base mix and I started highlighting the head. This process takes some time but gives you more control where you apply the highlights. I always focus on the most outer parts, I mean the nose, lips, cheeks and forehead. Yeah, I'm about to fade away Cause every time I wake up I feel like it's Monday Something's going wrong with all the chemicals up in my brain All of a sudden I don't look at anything the same way Gotta build up on my thoughts sitting in an ashtray I'm sorry
sorry that I'm so inconvenient, okay? Just let me be me and I'll stay out of your way. I can see the way you look at me, I'm such a disgrace. I never really asked to be brought into this place. You wanna love me? Well then baby, have a taste. All the highs and the lows, no, you'll never be the same. I, don't I proceed with applying the pure salmon rolls, but in the meantime, I'm glazing the transitions using the previous mix. This keeps it smooth. You can now see how vibrant it gets and how the final highlight pops out. If needed, you can highlight it even further by adding white paint to the mix. Remember to use the previous tone as a glaze, or if the highlight is still wet, to blend it. This is called wet blending. It makes the transition between colors invisible and smooth. It's only up to you how smooth you want to have it, because the smoother you want it, the more time you need to spend on glazing it. Again, I paint the eyes as already shown before. If your hands are shaking, try to put them both on the table and grab the brush very close to the tip. It will help you to make more detailed moves with more control. And this is the final effect. It looks interesting and more natural. Compared it with the previous ones, I think I like that method the most. But as I said, it is more time consuming. For single miniatures it might be a better solution, but for an army painting it could be a nightmare sometimes. As an alternative, I will show you another method which will require airbrush and the oil paints. Once again, I mix the red leather and the salmon rolls as a base tone and I apply two layers to get a smooth skin tone. Now it's the time for the airbrush. I use the flat flesh and I apply it as a zenithal highlight from above. Our base tone will be only slightly visible from below, but it will do its job. Then I cover it with the matte varnish. Now I will create so-called oil wash. I took the dark brown oil paint from random producer and I mixed it with the white spirit. I apply it all over the face. You can notice how well it flows into recesses. After that, I took the cotton bud with the white spirit and I softly cleaned the most exposed parts. It is not a surprise that those places are exactly the same as the places which we were highlighting with the brush in previous method. These are the spots where normally hit the light. Have a look. It also looks very clean and smooth. I'm happy with the outcome and the speed quality ratio, as this method is also very fast, especially if you have many models to do at once. You can compare now the effect with the previous examples.
And the last method. It is a combination of all other ones, dedicated to the more detailed models. I started with the black undercoat and then I mixed red leather and dark grey to obtain my base skin tone color. I apply it with the brush, but you can of course use airbrush for that too. Then I took salmon rolls, which I already used in this video before, and I apply it with the airbrush from above. Note that the first layer looks like grey color. Only after the second layer of the paint, you can get this little pink tint. As I said, this is a combined method, so I use the tricks which I have already shown earlier. So, the contrast paint, diluted with the airbrush thinner, will be applied to strengthen the shadows and to create more contrast. Then I took the pure salmon rolls and I made some highlights with the brush. As I said, the little extra details make our work outstanding, so I decided to paint the cross on his forehead with the glowing orange color. And that's it, we have seen all five different methods and I hope you will find it useful, especially when you are a beginner painter. Let me know in the comment which method you like the most and which do you normally use. Thanks for watching this long video and see you soon!